Good morning and welcome to another edition of Better Business, Better Life. Today I am pretty excited because I am being joined by Jonathan B. Smith, who is over in a city that is on my bucket list, so New York City. <laughs> Expert EOS implementer means I've done over 500 sessions with clients with a I think, certain quality score. I, I know it's the 500 sessions with clients. So I've done like 1,200 sessions with clients at this point. I mean, my favorite tool is, my favorite tool is the tool that works at the time because the, I love being able to sort of have a toolbox and be like, oh, I have a, I have this toolbox and I get to choose which tool I need to apply for the team at the time they need it. Jonathan is an entrepreneur. He is an expert EOS implementer and also a negotiation coach. So quite a bit of experience there with Jonathan. Uh, welcome to the show, Jonathan. Lovely to have you. Thanks, Sabra. Happy to be here. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm super excited. We always have a little bit of a chat before we come on and just hearing your experience. I mean, you started as um, Gino Wickman Seconds client. So I'm, I'm kind of sitting here at a bit of a fangirl moment right now, kind of going, wow, I've got somebody who knows Gino from the beginning. But tell us a bit about your story and, and how did you get to, to meet the Gino Wickman? Well, I actually met Gino at an EO, at EO event. So the Entrepreneurs Organization, he and I were both in the Entrepreneurs Organization. Uh, in Detroit, and he had just sold his business with his dad, and there was some guy bouncing around. We were at a bar, and he was bouncing around the bar like super high energy. I'm like, who's that guy? I want to meet that guy. So I ended up introducing myself. Gina was trying to figure out what he was going to do on his next gig. It wasn't called EOS at that time. It was called Virtual CEO. And oh, okay. um, so I got to see EOS before it became the world famous EOS. That is amazing. Yeah, okay. And so this man that was bouncing, I can imagine Gino bouncing around the bar, um, you engaged with him. Um, what were you doing at that time? Like, why, why were you even interested in speaking with him? Well, I just wanted to meet him because he seemed like a cool guy with like, almost like a halo on his head. And yeah. uh, <laughs> that, that wasn't a fanboy conversation. It was literally, he came in like a ball of energy. And so we talked to him and we were having some challenges in our business at the time at four partners and we couldn't seem to quite get along and make enough money and make the business work. And Gino said, uh, I'm doing this coaching. Why don't you come in and try this coaching with me? So for $1,500 a day, we paid Gino to come in and he practiced on us and uh, there was no, no EOS process at the time. Yeah, so you were sort of like his, you know, when we first started as EOS implementers, we always have a couple of clients that we kind of practice on. You were Gino's practice client. I'm his practice client, and we're still friends. So that's, that says something. <laughs> that is wonderful. And so that business, you were saying you had four partners. Was that were, um, family, non-family? Um, how did those four partners come together? Three family members. So my brother, Tyler, my cousin, Jeremy, and a third partner, partner named Les Rom. So, and then myself. Sure. And so Gino came in. What did he discover was the real issue with you? Well, if you read page 53, Attraction, he talks about how we had different core values. So we are the example of having different core values and the business falling apart because we wanted different things from our lives. Right. And that must have been a wee bit of a revelation for you, because I bet you at that point you were wondering, you know, why is this not working out? And then suddenly you have the, the answer, if you like. We were just grateful to have an answer. It was a lot of, it was really painful to try and figure it out ourselves and say, we're smart. Why can't we figure this out? Why is it so difficult? Why is it so hard to get projects out and make money? And so it was really nice to have Gino help us uh, get some clarity there. Hmm. So I'm, I'm, I'm curious, I and mean, without sort of sharing, you know, I only share what you can share, I suppose. What actually happened with that business in the end? I left. Mm -hmm. I taught myself how to do search engine optimization. So in like 1999, I taught myself to do search engine optimization. By 2003, I had, I had an offer um, from Sheryl Sandberg at Google to come work for her and had lunch with Eric Schmidt and spoke to 400 engineers, I had sort of taught myself how to do search engine optimization. So I went and did that. And uh, the business sort of 
clipped along. Les kept the business. My cousin Jeremy left the business. He ultimately went into the financial services business and recently sold that business to uh, to a large aggregator. My brother Tyler became the CIO at uh, EOS, EOS, and I went and worked with my dad in the security business, and then ultimately came back from the Middle East and decided I didn't want to be on long haul flights anymore and became an implementer. So in 2013. 2013, so 10, 10 years ago. Um, and so why did you decide to become an implementer? Well, I didn't want to work for anyone else and I don't think I was qualified to work for anyone else. That's sort of a joke, but I came back having done some pretty amazing things in the Middle East. We sold a couple hundred million dollars worth of projects there met with the royal families doing work for them coming home to get a job just didn't seem to be on the in the cards for me tyler said to me well Payne's doing really well and you know mark uh mark was doing really well at the time and mark winters and so he said you totally can do this you're an entrepreneur you know how to sell you understand the system you just don't have a network domestically so he encouraged me to do it and you know, back, going back to the theme of your podcast, like I only had like $10,000 left in the bank after having saved a ton of money and it was time to go figure out something. And uh, so I grounded out for 18 months to go figure out how to make it work. And I tried to quit four or five times before that. And my brother Tyler kept me on the straight and narrow. So thank you, Tyler, because <laughs> now you're an expert EOS implementer, which means for those who don't know, what is an expert EOS implementer? Uh, expert EOS implementer means I've done over 500 sessions with clients yep. with a I think, certain quality score. I, I know it's the 500 sessions with clients. So I've done like 1,200 sessions with clients at this point. Wow, that's amazing. I know you said you've done 150 implementations. So um, what was it about, I mean, in, in the business that you're working in with your, your brothers and your other um, shareholder, you it was obviously about having core values and making sure you're on the same page. What do you, would you say now has been the sort of the, the revolutionary thing of, of EOS for you? When you're working with other businesses, what do you think is the, the thing that most makes the most difference? Well, I love that we have a system that we can start with. So I call it structured flexibility. EOS gives me structure as an entrepreneur to engage with the business as opposed to doing some kind of custom consulting gig every single time. And then it engages me in conversations with such such a wide array of entrepreneurs that I have really amazing experience that I can share across clients because for the most part, they're not competitive. Generally, I'll yep. conflict myself out if I'm with a client who I feel is in any way competitive. I don't want to feel like I would compromise, you know, my anyone feel like I'm compromising them. And so we have this great system, markets really well. I know it really well, like the back of my hand. And then, as I told you, I also work with Chris Foss from Never Split the Difference. And I taught myself, or at least just engaged in facilitation so eq facilitation facilitation around like academically what does it mean and then with chris hostage negotiation which is just another form of communication and facilitation we call it tactical empathy so um being able to get in the room with the right people who trust me and then have really having really difficult conversations and solving really difficult problems and helping them create self-managing businesses is a it's a hoot it is, yeah, no, I completely, I mean, I'm not an expert by any means, I'm a certified EOS implementer, but I've certainly loved the journey so far. Um, I, I think one of the things that people often say, though, you know, EOS is, it's, it is a framework, it is a structure, um, so therefore, you know, do you end up having a cookie cutter solution? How would you answer that? I believe in structured flexibility, so I am not <laughs> the one who has a cookie cutter solution. I, Gino says I am his most visionary implementer so okay i do my best to follow the agenda but you as uh my facilitation coach likes to say you can't take a team where they don't want to go so you have to deliver them what they need at the time that they need it and um mark o'donnell and i were partners uh, mark's the visionary at us now and um, sometimes i would fill in for him or vice versa and the clients were always amazed at how we ended up in the same place and we took a different path in a session mm. together. So yeah. um, I think that's what's important, that we do the best we can to follow the 15% of EOS that needs to be 
completely structured and then the rest is facilitation 85 yeah. percent facilitation I, I agree completely. I mean, I think at the end of the day, it's very much about the structure provides you with the framework to achieve the right outcomes. But how you get there, I, I've always found is very, very different with every client that I work with. Um, you know, we always start at the same time and kind of finish more or less around the same time. And we get the same sort of outcomes, but there can be very, very different pathways to get there. And that's really down to that facilitation. Yeah, and it feels well, oftentimes like you're going to crash the plane during the day. You're like, I'm not sure how we're going to get from here to the end of the day. But <laughs> Miraculously, it happens most of the yeah. time. Most of the time. Yeah, no, it is interesting, isn't it? I must admit, I've, um, in the early days, you know, I think I was probably a lot more sort of, you know, we've got to be, we've got, we've got some, as these are EOS implementers, we've got some guidelines around, you know, what each section should take. And I used to get really nervous because this is supposed to take half an hour and we've already been at it for an hour. But if, as a good facilitator, you always get there in the end and it's just about adjusting to what's in the room. Definitely a lot of adjusting. Yeah, and, and having those uncomfortable conversations. I, I love that. I mean, I'm, my, the elephant is my favorite kind of tool, if you like. So tell me a little bit about the negotiation stuff, because that never split the difference. That book was a bit of an eye opener for me. Um, I remember reading it probably about a year ago now, and it was like, wow, this, this um, opened my eyes to a different way of thinking about things. So how did you meet Chris? How did you get involved? And, and what is it that that has taught you? So... I lived in D.C. when I came back from the Middle East. I had been in Abu Dhabi and I moved back to the Middle East. There's a business club in D.C. called the Tower Club. It is the business club that everyone sort of goes to for breakfast. So if you're going to have a meeting, you're like, oh, let's just go meet at the Tower Club. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have anywhere to go or anything to do. So I joined the Tower Club and I go to breakfast at the Tower Club. And there was a guy named Sid at the Tower Club who sort of held court there every morning. And he goes... Chris, this is Jonathan. Jonathan, this is Chris. You should talk. So Chris and I ended up talking. He had a need to help. He needed help of negotiating something in the Middle East, getting paid. He wasn't getting paid and he wanted to know how things worked. I happen to actually have the intelligence for how the how things worked in the Middle East or in UAE better than he did. I helped mm -hmm. him with that. He and I became friends. He told me he was writing a book. I'm like, yeah, you and everybody else are writing a book. Um, that book ended up being Never Split the Difference, which he wrote with Tal Raz, who in Tal is world famous and the best at what he does in the business. And Chris is the best at what he does in the business. And then an, I helped Chris get his first talk with EO New Jersey and then another talk with YPO. And then Chris is a super hard worker. So he just has been on a plane promoting the book and the Black Swan Group and Tactical Empathy since 2000 and I don't know, 15 or something like that. And I was their implementer. So I, I often say I'm the architect, I'm the business architect for the business. Whereas Chris is, he's our spokesmodel. He's the best guy on, on the camera. He loves being on the camera and does amazing things. And uh, I helped architect the business. And in the process of hanging out with him and his son, Brandon, and the team at the Black Swan Group, I was like, this is fascinating. I want to learn how these skills work. So I just started learning the skills and uh, it's gotten to the point where I am now a certified Black Swan coach. I'm in the process of building an AI bot that uh, helps train people on the Black Swan skills. I am in fact doing a Black Swan training at our EOS annual conference in Dallas that will be sort of a combination of EOS and Black Swan. And the idea is going to teach you how to do better business development. I'm going to teach you how to facilitate better. And then I'm going to teach you how to raise your fees using the black swan <laughs> skills to negotiate. So there'll be a hundred implementers there at the, at the event. And um, it's just being with Chris has been an amazing run for me. We, it's one of those things that just sort of like my relationship with Gino, it just works for both of us and we, mm. and we work really well together. Okay. Now we talked about Dallas before we got on this um, this podcast. I said I wasn't sure if I was going. I think you might have just changed my mind. <laughs> I, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's great. Okay, so the the combination of the Black Swan training and the EOS, what does that give you in terms of working with clients? Do you think? I have skills in the room that when things get really hot. No one else has those skills. Chris has those skills, but he doesn't mm -hmm. have the EOS skills. And Derek, who's our head coach at Black Swan, has those skills. They're amazing hostage negotiators. 
but I'm the hostage. So they're hostage negotiators with hundreds of successful hostage um, negotiations. I am a business coach with hundreds of successful business hostage negotiations. So I can be in the room and see things now. And I call things out in a way that I never did when I was starting. So when someone asks a question and I'm like, hmm, that's really interesting. What are they saying? So I, instead of saying, why did you say that? I'll now, I'll now say, I'll now label it and go, seems like there's a reason you're asking dynamic silence, wait for them to respond. Three seconds later, they'll tell you, oh, that person actually needs to get fired or I'm upset and I need to leave or I don't know, whatever the issue is, whatever your elephant that you're throwing at me is that they'll tell me that. But using tactical empathy, the issue is it's it's another language. The only way to learn it is by doing immersion and immersion being literally using the skills in First, we say using the skills as um, in low stakes practice, and then ultimately being able to use the skills in high stakes. Mm. So. I do like that. It's amazing how um, the subtlety of words can make such a huge difference, isn't it? Like a Jedi mind trick. It's amazing. Mm. Like You're like, how did that work that way? I would have upset them if I said, why did you ask? And when I yeah. say, seems like there's a reason you're asking, they melt and tell me. Yeah, I've written that down. I think that's really important. Seems like the reason you're asking. Um, I was talking to somebody yesterday on the podcast and um, she had another sort of way of um, having people answer questions in a different way. And I just, yeah, as I say, it can be very, very subtle, but just having that empathy, um, changing the words that you use rather than triggering, triggering somebody, you're actually um, creating them to open. I know you're causing them to open up. Sorry, my, my math's not working this morning. <laughs> well, we, and my mantra is, you may know is stay curious. So you need mm. to stay curious because the way they're acting has nothing to do with me. Something's yep. going on for them. What's the black swan? What's behind that behavior? And mm. as an EOS implementer and a black swan coach, what's important is that we stay curious and we don't take it personally. Because yeah. there's sometimes some pretty hot, hot issues we're dealing with. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think it's probably why I enjoy being an EOS um, implementer is I was always a very, very curious child and I'm very, very good at sort of, you know, asking questions and trying to, to get to the, the root cause of certain things. I think I, I enjoy that part of it. <laughs> yeah, well, we're lucky we get to learn from so many smart people. No, I know. It's, it's, a, it's not really a job, is it? It's something that we talk about the EOS life. Um, I think in the beginning, when I first saw that whole EOS life, I thought, oh, that sounds really amazing. And I think now, what, three and a half years in, almost four years in, um, I, I am living that EOS life. It's you know, I'm doing what I love with people I love, getting to make a huge difference. And I'm finding time to pursue other passions finally, which took me a long time to, <laughs> to actually do. Well, you certainly look happy. Oh, I, I, yeah, I just say I love what I do, which is why I'm here on the weekend doing a podcast because I actually enjoy it. But um, and it's funny because people always say, you know, this whole work life balance. Um, I I have a different way of viewing it now. So I thought work life balance meant that, you know, you kind of work nine to five ish and then had all this time. But actually, it's about what works for you. And for me, I'm in here on a Saturday morning doing a couple of hours of podcasting. But then I'll probably take some time off on Tuesday and go and do something else that I want to do because that works for me timing wise. So I think the whole work life balance is an interesting um, concept, particularly when you love what you do. <laughs> yeah, I I say that um, my my assistant knows she calls me an outdoor cat. She's like, I don't want too many parameters. I'm like, don't put me too scheduled. I want some time in between. I want to be able to walk on the street and have a call. Yep. Sometimes I don't want to be on Zoom. This week I didn't have any sessions. Next week I have four. So. Mm -hmm. Just the way it's a nice way to live life. And uh, I talked to my brother on Monday, one of my brothers, and I was like, oh, I don't have to work today. He's like, that must be nice. I'm like, but didn't mean I didn't work at all. It just mean I didn't have to go to an office and I didn't have to be with clients that day. Yeah. So one of the things, and I'm going to ask you guys, an expert sort of US information, one of the things I hear a lot is like, oh, it's easy for you to say that, Deborah, because, you know, you run a small practice, there's only a couple of people working in that, and you can, um, you know, if you take a day off, it, it, it doesn't matter. I've got a big business that's got 140 staff, you know, how is that going to work for me? How would you answer well, that? Well, I mean, I would just like, the, you know, the question is, how is that working for you? <laughs> that's what I would ask them. That's a calibrated question. It's open-ended question. And just say, how is that working for you? 
And then <laughs> if I, my husband is listening to this Amazon. podcast, he's going to be giggling to himself because that is my favorite question for people is like, how's that working for you? And I often ask him when he's whinging about something, I guess that's really interesting. How's that working for you? <laughs> yeah. So, um, and then the other thing is I'm pretty clear that I want to live, I wanted to build a company of one. So there's this book called Company of One. Oh, yeah. I wanted to create a sm so company of one basically says it doesn't mean only one person, but it means a small business mm -hmm. that is highly profitable with the, you know, where you're surrounded by people and their unique abilities. So you have a unique team and you have a lot of fun together and you all get to do what your, you know, highest and best uses are as mm. opposed to, you know, I have 147 people and 50, 50 of them didn't want to show up to work today. What's it like to try to get them to do whatever, you know, answer the phones at the call center or whatever, whatever it is that they're doing. So we all have, I mean, I intentionally built the life that I have. So yeah. I would encourage others to do the same. Hmm. But it's not to say that you can't have a large business and still not, you know, and be able to take that time off and do things that you want to do. Because in theory, if the business is running well, and you've got the right people doing the right roles, and they are, you know, sharing the same core values on the same journey with you, then it is possible to really delegate and elevate yourself out of the day to day business, right? You can ask my clients that spend on, you know, live in Florida now and have businesses here or, you know, I, yep. I was on one of my clients level 10 meetings and um, he was like, well, one of my partners quit while I was in Aruba and you didn't tell me. And they were like, well, we didn't need to tell you we had handled. So why do we need to call you and break up your vacation? Because someone decided to quit. Mm -hmm. So the reality is EOS will allow people to do that. Yep. My unique ability is not running a large enterprise. There are plenty of people who are really good at that. And then we have to just be very intentional about what is it that you, you know, we say EOS as EOS implementers, we help you get what you want from your business. Mm -hmm. We don't define what that is. So. Yeah. So again, yeah, that clarity is really important. What do you actually really want from your business? And then how do you design that business around what you want? Exactly. Hmm. Nice. Okay. So um, I, I always ask the EOS implementers to come and hear this. What was your favorite EOS tool? Do you have a favorite one that? Um, I mean, my favorite? Favorite tool is, my favorite tool is the tool that works at the time. <laughs> because the, yeah. I love being able to sort of have a toolbox and be like, oh, I have, a, I have this toolbox and I get to choose which tool I need to apply for the team at the time they need it don't know if I ever thought of a favorite tool because I think I don't I don't necessarily bias myself to one or the other I mean my favorite tool is like when people use core values well and I walk into an into like I walked into one of my clients and they had 2,000 employees and he said it was five o'clock in the morning and I went to see the the operations you know the COO and at his desk and we're sitting down and then he's like yeah everyone gets hot lunch on Fridays what do you mean hot lunch like, well, people aren't used to having hot lunch, so we feed them on Fridays. That's just part of the deal here. And he said, I could feel something different. What's happened? And he said, the core values are really working. So I really like when they work mm -hmm. um, and that when we, when I can see it on sort of the entry level people using it and the entire organization being galvanized around it. I mean, it's pretty, pretty awesome. So I say our job is to help build a high performance team. And that's one of the key components to build high performance team. Yeah, absolutely. So why would people even consider using EOS? What do you think the biggest challenges are that people face when they come to you and say, hey, Jonathan, can you help us out? We have those five frustrations. So, mm -hmm. you know, they have issues with people. So if they haven't fired people or they have the wrong people hanging around or in the wrong seats. Mm-hmm especially in these family businesses, right? They've been here and you're like, oh, you're putting up with the family member because you want to you be able to have Thanksgiving with them. You know, you wouldn't want to tell them something that was true or at least yep. your truth. Uh, there's not enough profit. I'm like, why are you doing that business? I don't understand. <laughs> like you're doing all this effort to get paid 150 days from now and they're always going to cut you on, on what, what you're getting paid. Do a different business. That's better. Mm -hmm. process, you know, 
why are your process is not working? You know, they're not actually, it's not the documented part that's the hard part. It's the follow by all. How do I get yeah. everyone following a consistent process? So, and then, you know, we've tried lots of things, you know, they were like, oh, I tried all these things and nothing seems to work. You know, we I see it all, all the time. And, you know, smart. The other thing is they don't have anyone else to talk to. So, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, they feel very lonely. YPO or other peer groups are helpful and other, you know, coaches are helpful, but, you know, it's nice to have, you know, I, the best EOS implementers are trusted advisors with their clients, true trusted mm -hmm. advisors. So, yeah. And there's that consistency. I mean, I'm a big believer in EO. We do a lot of sponsorship of EO and, and the YPO and having a peer, family business association as well. Like having a peer group is really, really important. But we always say there's three things that you need. There's the peer group, you need a coach or a mentor, and then you need an operating system. Um, and I think once you've got those three things as a business owner, that feeling of loneliness goes away. Because I know when I was, it, I've, I've had other businesses before I went into um, EOS and, you know, it can be really lonely at the top when you've got a husband who works a normal nine to five job and doesn't understand what running a business is like and um, you can't talk to your staff about some of those bigger issues and challenges that you're having uh, it makes sense to have people around you who can actually take you through that journey yeah and I wrote that book called optimize for growth that actually built ah, that model right. the model comes Perfect. from the book because I had seen it with my clients and then I used I wrote the book with the intent of actually being able to promote EOS to uh, vintage chairs Oh yeah. <laughs> what the idea was. Well, because I kept getting when I when I kept meeting with them, it was like, "Are you competitive with us?" It was before you know Gino said we were breaking up concrete at the time. It's like no one knows what this is, so we're breaking up concrete. So we we're having a bunch of conversations, and people didn't know EOS with the brand the way it is today. So that's why I wrote that book, Optimize for Growth. Optimize for growth. I have a look at. I haven't seen that, so that's awesome. Um, it's interesting because I think that obviously you're over in the US, where EOS is very, very well recognised. Uh, not so much here in New Zealand. In fact, if you Google EOS, you get things like lipsticks, cameras, shoes, um, and everything other than an entrepreneurial operating system. So I often have to, t uh, you know, take the time to explain what it really is. Um, if you had to explain EOS in two sentences, what would you say? I say EOS is a strategy execution system that helps you get what you want from your business. Nice. And um, you know, we do three things. We, we say vision, traction, healthy. So vision, where are we going five to 10 years from now? Traction, what are we doing in the next 90 days to get you towards that vision and healthy? How do we do two things in healthy? Have organizational clarity and then have all the difficult conversations that you've been avoiding if you're in our room, you're not going to be able to avoid them. I'm going to call them out and we're going to work through them. Beautiful. Well said. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to, I've got, a, I've got a whole range of things from you already. So, I mean, there's, you know, um, changing the way that you actually ask questions seems like the reason that you're asking that. Um, I've got the, uh, the book, obviously, that Chris Foss wrote, which has never split the difference. Amazing book for reading around facilitation skills. Optimize for growth. I didn't realize you had a book. I apologize, Jonathan, but I'm looking forward to reading that oh, now. Okay. <laughs> um, what are the three kind of top tips or tools you would give to the listeners so they can go away and do something practical from this conversation? number one stay curious so when i say stay curious i mean when you are frustrated and you want to tell someone i'm right you're wrong <laughs> there's a reason that they're in fact frustrated and if you can stay curious and um, be open-minded you have a better chance to come come out with a better outcome number two um, yep learn so there's five levels of listening so listening for the gist, like, you know, it's like me talking to you and going like listening to my phone and being like, yeah, yeah. Oh, I heard what you said. That's right. Okay. Uh, listening to respond. We see this in session all the time. That's someone who like leans in and is like, your hand is off. <laughs> like, me, 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 me. And then they don't even respond to what the other person, they're just responding, but it has nothing to do with maybe what the other person said. The goal is to listen for logic. You need to listen for the logic of what the other person is having said. So there's five levels of listening. So it's listening for the just, listening for to respond. You don't want to be in either of them. Listening for logic is where you can actually stay. Then listening for emotion. So like you can't even, you can't stay in listening for emotion, but you can hear it and sort of like 
doing doing yoga and staying and focusing on your breath and then listening for their point of view. You don't have to agree with their point of view, but in the highest level of listening, you will hear their point of view. Even if you disagree with it, at least you could understand what their point of view is. So in that case, I'm saying listen for logic. Try to stay in listening for logic and try to avoid listening for listening to respond. Um, the third thing I would say is EOS is simple, but it's not easy. So, and it takes time and you need to be patient with it and realize that it took you a long time to get here. EOS is a way of life. It's not, it's not like a certificate you put on the wall. So be patient with yourselves and, and focus on the gain that you're achieving, not the gap that you haven't achieved yet. So. Good old Dan Sullivan book, eh? The gap, not the gain. <laughs> oh, yeah, not the gap, yeah. Cool. Okay, great. Thank you so much. That's been really amazing. In terms of the type of clients that you would like to work with, what do they look like, Jonathan? My, I like clients that are, they tend to be very large with complex businesses, complex people issues. Um, they tend to be like 25 to $500 million in revenue. So I tend to work with bigger ones and, and, and industries like healthcare roll-ups, financial services. So I have a background in Wall Street and hedge funds and private equity um, and then professional services. That's just what we happen to have in New York. So those are the, those are the things that I tend to work on. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. And if people want to get in contact with you, how, how could they best do that? So I have a, I have an interesting URL. So my, my name is Jonathan B. Smith and my, my email address is JBS Juliet Bravo Sierra G JBS at O the letter O the number four G.com O four G.com. So the, that's for optimized for growth. That's the book that I wrote. Yep. Yep. Um, that's the best way to get a hold of me. That is fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, I usually ask this at the beginning, but I'm going to ask it right at the end because I've, I've picked up on a little bit some pieces. I heard Cheryl Sandberg. I've heard a whole bunch of stuff kind of come out with your journey. Um, you've had an amazing journey. What do you think you're most proud of professionally and personally? I mean, I'm proud that every day I get to go help people make their businesses better and engage in the world and hopefully make it a little bit of a better place. Mm. So nothing specific that I've done, but the fact that I, have built this amazing practice. I say that I'm like a world famous doctor when people explain, when they ask me what I do. And I'm like, I'm like a business doctor. So I'm a world famous business doctor and people fly all over the world to come see me to fix their businesses. So it's a pretty amazing and privileged place to be. And I'm just have lots of gratitude for that. And I am very grateful that you took the time to come and talk to me today because I thoroughly enjoyed, um, uh, A, sort of learning from you, getting to know you a wee bit better, um, and particularly understanding that, you know, that you have got all these amazing skills that we can tap into and, and, and use. So thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom, your knowledge, um, and I look forward to hopefully seeing you in Dallas. I'm going to be seeing you in Dallas. Sounds like you're coming. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you very much.